What's going on, guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Hey, <laughs> join this mess already in progress. So, I couldn't sleep last night, and I kept thinking about trying to do a like a cantilever suspension on the kits. Uh, if you've been with the channel for a while, you remember some of my older custom builds. I did a lot of wild stuff. The one I built for RC Four Wheel Drive for a giveaway, geez, probably four years ago. Um, it had a really neat Kenny lever rear suspension and uh, using some longer shocks and things like that. I, you'll see the original hot rod build that I did the first time I ever did it. It's got Kenny lever suspension front and rear and it works fantastic. I'll show you that real quick to kind of set the mood for where this video is going. They think every uh, artist has their format, some paint, some sculpt, some work with metal. I happen to work with M3 spacers, hardware, and rods. <laughs> That's just what I do. So this has like a bar across the front, a pivot point, two separate cantilever arms, and small little arms connecting the axle. Uh, this thing's stiff from setting for a while, but we still get separate side-to-side -side movement. And the rear is similar. It's not attached side-to-side. -side. They're each independent of each other. And works phenomenally having the way that worked i had to put shock somewhere and this was mind you seven eight years ago we had no 50 millimeter shocks at the time not that weren't toy grade or something decent working with all 10 scale stuff so i had these off of one of my uh galan 2 rc4 drives and yeah they fit perfect behind the seat on the body that used to go on this uh, that body is pretty sad shape these days that was an old model car body 32 roadster so, I was thinking about it again last night. I mean, we've got space back here on these kits, and I'm trying to figure out a way to make it work. I've got one side kind of mocked up, and I didn't want things sticking up above the, the rails. This is my prototype tester. It does have the bed sides, which hopefully by the time this video airs are in stock on the website. If you've got a kit already, I've got a bunch of bed sides coming. Uh, they're a little bit different than these because we made some modifications to them, but... Uh, yeah, I wanted to keep it where that's it doesn't interfere with the bed sides and it doesn't interfere with the flat top of the bed in case you want to put a bed cover or wood bed floor or something on it. But this is what we're looking at doing. So I made all of these out of, to me, a semi-truck front leaf spring plates. Uh, your U-bolts would go through it hold to the axle. And uh, they just happened to have enough holes and I cut them into triangles and yeah, made it work. So that's what we're going to be looking at doing in this video. I don't know what to call this, if it's like a, it's going to be kind of like a scale shop hangout. It's going to be a lot of trial and error and a lot of just off the cuff kind of, kind of stuff. So we're not really, yeah, we're just shooting from the hip with this one. So let's roll. So with any Kenny lever system, you need three points of connection. You need your pivot point to where it mounts to the chassis. You need a place for the shock mounts and a place for the axle mount. So typically it's just a triangle and it would, push one way or another your shock and your axle would be on the opposite side so you're still getting that you can work that around to where they're kind of working at a 90 um, that's kind of the object of it so you can move the necessary force as a shock to a different direction than it would be headed normally so I've done something on the other side which is completely I don't know what the word is befuzzled myself I've kind of crisscrossed so instead of doing that like normal, I've got the points intersecting like this, the pivot point being up here by my tattoo, my thumb, and they're working opposite of each other. And it's just a clearance game. It's playing with spacers. So I didn't want to film it all from the start because it's just me trial and error, trial and error, taking stuff, putting it back together, taking it apart, putting it back together. Um, my sketch I drew last night, I was actually, it was keeping me up. I was wanting to do this to the front end. And the way these kits are, it's just a little too long, even for these shocks. I think these are 100 millimeter RC4 drive shocks. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I pulled these off of something else. <laughs> so, and I don't want the entire front suspension. You don't want a giant shock going on the side. I don't think that would look cool. So I've got some different ideas for the front shock mounts to do something like that. But it's going to involve some uh, 3D printing and things that I can't just whip up on the fly. So... That may be a later objective, but for now, what I am using, these are some little angled plates off of a Sin F450. I don't even remember what these went to. It was just in my Sin spare parts. Um, I tried to use one a couple of video, videos ago, 
and I was bending it to shape and it ended up not working. Apparently, oh no, there's another one. I had four of them, so I don't know. I think these were some of the four link mounts without the lift kit on the sin. And uh, yeah, I would like to find some more of those. But that's gonna be our pivot piece. So there's two problems with that as a pivot piece. You really need like a eyelet. You need something, a bushing for it to ride on so it can move independent and still be attached firmly to the truck. So I've worked a way around that. And that's what I was in the middle of here, I think, before I decided to film this. Running this, I've got a nut on this. And I'm going to run this down and tighten it just to the point to where it will still spin. And then we can run this whole assembly into the chassis and bolt it down like it's a solid unit. As long as we don't mess up our gap, which will be smaller than this in this piece, then this can still pivot on the bolt itself. And again, it's not, you know, in a perfect world, you would have a bushing and a greasable fitting of some kind of joint. But in the RC world, metal on metal like that is not going to be a problem. We'll get it just snug to start with. We need a little bit more snug because we don't want any side to side slop in our bracket here. Because that will cause a whole bunch of slop in the suspension. So we'll get it just tight, snug and back it off. It's just enough where it can move freely. <clears throat> All right. So that looks good. <clears throat> so right now, let me move you back up. So right now without tires and wheels on this, I'm kind of just guesstimating where we need to mount it. And that's one good thing, the versatility of this kit. We've got, I'm looking at, you can see the other side, the shock mounts down here to the four link mounts. And we've got three or four or five holes there that we could play with on this. If we really had to, we could mount this with the upper four link mount, but it's luckily that's the way this four link is set up, that's not gonna be needed. And again, I know somebody's going to ask, why do this over just running like this truck? This already had these 50 millimeter shocks mounted in here nice and snug at a good angle. Everything was jiving right. Why not? Just do something different. That's all. It's just the exercise in engineering, trying to come up with something cool. Um, it's going to look neater. People are going to be like, wait a minute, what's that? And, you know, there's, there's a little engineering behind it. It's kind of cool. But it's, you know, <laughs> it serves no real purpose. It's not going to handle better, I don't think. Sometimes, I mean, like you look at F1 cars, they have the inboard shocks and they're like across the back and they have arms that go down and stuff. There's an advantage to that with weight placement and uh, space with that as well because then you can get those giant coilovers. Like I've seen them, what was it? It was in the 90s. They had a Mustang concept car. It was like a 95 or 96, the hydrogen powered or something silly, but it had that behind the rear seat under the uh, rear deck lid. And it just had little arms that went down to the shocks. And that's that saved a lot of space, those big coilovers. There wasn't a good way to mount those to a solid rear axle car like that at the time. So, you know, there's, there's actual reasons why you would do it in real life. None of which really apply here in the scale world. Um, right now, all of our components are all oversized compared to one-to-one -one cars. Um, a little 50 millimeter shock. I mean, that's still massive comparatively to a scale shock. Like, um, I... On my five, my three window, I use the little uh, one eighteenth scale Galan two shocks. Absolutely no performance whatsoever. They're terrible, but they look like one tenth scale shocks. They they look they fit the bill, but they give you absolutely no suspension at all. They're horrible. The the fit and fitment of them, fit and finish, the sliding in and out, it's just jagged, and uh, not great. So, anyway, I digress. I'm gonna mount this up here. I guess the same hole we have it in on the other one. I've made a link for the axle from the axle. We're going to use the stock shock mount outboard here and uh, kind of get it at an angle and get it away. I've already adjusted the other one out to where I think it'll work. So we're going to just screw this thing out. We'll throw a spacer in here when we get done. I'm not sure how much we need. It looks like maybe six or eight millimeters somewhere in there, which I think all I have are nines and sixes. So we'll see if that works. Hopefully we don't need a longer grub screw inside of this to make it work. But it's all about the angles. We're just getting this angled so it can reach away from the chassis. And then we'll turn this one sideways so it can bolt to the axle and like so. It'll step underneath our bed and it's so close to the axle that it'll be in the opening, our wheel opening of the bedside. So it will not get in the way of anything with that, hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna mock this up and we'll test everything.
All right, guys. Been a lot of work. I uh, lots of issues with this. That's just how it works. Lots of little things to overcome. So on the other side, I it was hitting the bedside. This nut right here, or this bolt, scale bolt. I swapped it to a uh, regular button head M3 bolt instead of the scale bolt, and it was still rubbing just a little bit. Now again, these are prototype bedsides. The holes and stuff don't line up exactly perfect. So they've been walled out a little bit. The new ones have actually have holes along the inside that you can drill through to match every single hole in the chassis. So if you want to do some crazy shock setup and you need to put a bolt through somewhere other than the two primary mounts, it's already marked on the back. You can drill it out and it's perfectly horizontal, parallel, whatever, even with the one on the chassis rail. So that's, that's one feature that we developed on top of this because you see these have no markings on the inside just the two holes so now the other one has a thicker area across here and all of the holes are divoted on the back but regardless i just threw a couple extra two millimeter spacers in there and moved it out still clears the tire just fine um i wanted to lift the back of this up a little bit i wasn't happy with this four link having the lower rod all the way down and the upper rod almost all the way to the top it travels forward quite a bit so it doesn't fit great in the bedside opening that we have. Wasn't the best one to test it on. Uh, my drag car has got a really good four link setup. So I know it'll work. I just didn't even mess with this one because that's why we're here jacking with it now. But we've got this thing working. I would like to remove these extra springs off of these shocks. I don't know what these were on before where they needed the extra support, but I'm not taking this apart again. I've had this apart 75 times. But I wanted to show you a few crucial things before we put this bedside on and see how this thing actually sets. Everything hinges on this. Literally, it hinges on this. So you can see we have two nuts here. And like I showed you at the beginning, we tighten this nut down just enough to where this will pivot. But then that also makes the bolt and that nut solid. So there's just a tiny little slack between that nut and the end of the bolt. So this can move and be free. We can actually drop some, I actually use uh, uh, like gun oil, like a uh, lubricant for firearms. And uh, yeah, I just drip that in there. It gets in there and you know, it's like a super duper WD-40. And then we tighten the nut tight on the inside to this other nut. And so our pivot point stays loose outside of that. The entire shaft itself is solid. And we don't have to worry about that coming loose or anything. Uh, I'm not swapping this bolt out on this side. I'm, I'm done swapping bolts for tonight. <laughs> I've been doing this for about four hours now. I mean, you see it? It's very stiff, these extra springs. I'm pretty sure these shocks have springs in them. But it's just, a, it's a creative way to use what you got. If you don't have, like right now, the 50 millimeter shocks have been out of stock from RC4 Wheel Drive, just about everywhere. Um, the same with the Heim joints because of these kits. You guys have wiped them out. So <laughs> I told RC4 Wheel Drive, I actually did talk to RC4 Wheel Drive before the kits launched and I was like, Hey, I'm using a lot of your stuff. There might be some demand for it. They did ask me for a list of things like the scale transmissions and the Heim joints and the four link trusses and the axles and the things like that, that, you know, that are pretty much always going to be RC four wheel drive. And, uh, it's been five months, four months, somewhere in that range. And they're out of stock everywhere. Uh, my local hobby shop tried to get these M3 Heim joints and, uh, they, yeah, back ordered beyond forever so <laughs> um but yeah this is uh you know a good way to use something that you already got and it's just creative with playing with spacers so i've got i ended up coming back and putting like a two mil spacer in here we've got a three mil in here our shock is perfectly parallel to the chassis rail um this is like a six mil um uh, there's a two mil or a three mil down here to keep our rod in from hitting the axle housing this is a yoda one axle nothing new. Uh, this is some knockoff foreign truss that I just happened to have and it was the last one I had. And so you got to take things like that into consideration with your four link. Um, I keep getting asked all the time, you know, what length rods do I use? Well, that depends on what rod ends you're using. Um, one of them I've got, I've cut down some of these 30 millimeter rods from Amazon and I'm using RC4 drive stuff on the bottom like this. So it just, it all depends. Um, like you can see, this is a 40 millimeter rod here. Or no, that may be a 45. Might be a 50. I don't even know. It's some random Amazon thing. It's all scratched up. But then there's a three mil spacer. So, you know, it, it's all about finding and making what you need 
work. <laughs> there is not always the right part for the job. You might have to get creative. But I was I'm pretty stoked about this. This is kind of a inverted Kenny lever. So they crisscross our mounts here, our mounts here, and they're working opposite of each other. And they just move enough that it doesn't get interfere with each other. It works out where at ride height, our bolt here, because we're stuck dealing in M3, um, is right at the shock shaft. Um, it's hitting it a little bit on this side because I changed the bolt, but it is what it is. It's not hurting anything. It's That's the maximum height of the suspension. Um, when we go all the way down, our shock end is actually hitting the four-link mount, but so is our truss hitting our chassis. It's all about just making everything have the same tolerance. <clears throat> when all of your moving parts have the same tolerance and they all bottom out at the same time, then you don't have to worry about anything breaking because it's going to be a solid impact if you were to do something crazy and jump this or do anything like that. Suspension bottom out. Not one piece is going to take the full brunt of it. The three or four will take the impact. So I think I'm going to wrap this side up, get this all put back together, get the bed set on, add our extra two millimeter spacers. We really could have gotten by with one, but I don't have a whole lot of one mil spacers and I didn't want to use them on this because this is probably coming back apart again later for something else. And uh, because this is just my prototype tester. You see, we've got our negative GRC floorboard mounted on this one. Um, partially because I didn't have a transmission cross member for this and his kit comes with one that fits this floorboard. So we threw all that in there and it's not even in there right now. So I have to find that. But um, yeah, a lot of things in the works. It's just a neat way to play around. This is stuff that I think is fun. You may or may not. So take it as a grain of salt. But I'm gonna throw this side back together and then we'll see how this thing flexes. actually working really well. Um, I got the back end up, which I needed to do to start with. This one had absolutely about three millimeters of uh, suspension travel, which is not quite enough. A little bit of rake and uh, yeah, it's jiving actually pretty good. I think I would like to soften the shocks up a little bit, but this is just a prototype. This one I'm just using for, you know, this was a hacked up cab. Uh, we are actually working on a Roadster cab. It's gonna have a different windshield configuration and nice smooth edges, unlike my chopped off version here. So uh, yeah, this one, we're not ever gonna finish. It's, it's just gonna be build, repeat, take apart, repeat. But I like this setup. I think it's kind of actually cool that they're angled down. They parallel the lower four link mounts, the shocks do. And um, again, I think those are, those are either 100 or 110 millimeter shocks. Um, I don't know exactly. I don't know where my caliper went. There it is. It's hiding back here. We can eyeball it. Pretty much goes to there at an angle. These may just be 100s. Yeah, they may actually be 90s. I don't know. I haven't dealt with large shocks in a while, so my eagle eye is off a little bit. Uh, but yeah, these, I mean, these tires aren't even glued onto these wheels. They don't have any foams in them or nothing. But um, I'm digging it. It's all nice and flush, so if you wanted to do some kind of cover over this, now that's your cup of tea with these kits, then uh, yeah, you don't have any restrictions in your way. There's no, even all the way down, we're still well below the frame rail. Um, yeah, it actually works. <laughs> that's what's the cool part. Uh, now I did, like I mentioned earlier, the RC4 drive giveaway build back four or five years ago, it had the shocks mounted at the front, at the top of the rail, where we don't have any holes on the kit rail. And, uh, they, it was a lot longer, obviously, back then. That was the way we did things. It was still C-channel rail made out of half-inch square tube and all of that. And, uh, yeah, it basically pivoted up on top. The shot kind of stuck up above the rail. So I wanted to kind of develop beyond that. I don't want to do the same thing twice. I hate doing the same thing twice, actually. Um, that's why no two rat rods I ever build will be the same. Um, even the ones that are modeled after number two are different in their own unique ways. Try to make them as different as I can. So again, this four link setup is not ideal. Um, it's not perfectly triangulated. So you get a little bit of forward movement as the axle 
as the suspension drops, the axle moves forward, and you don't want that. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of limited with rods. There's not a whole lot of stuff on the market. Everything is 40, 45, 30, 35. There's no odd sizes, unless you look at like the RC four wheel drive kits. But I don't want to, I can't buy every four link kit they've made for every vehicle to get some like 37s and 42s and, and odd sizes and stuff like that. But companies, that's what they do. When they make a kit, they make the rod length, whatever they need it to be. And I'm um, hoping we get to that point at some point down the road <laughs> where we can just have everything made that we need to make everything work. But I don't know. Right now, it's kind of fun. We're all just kind of doing these builds are, you know, everybody's doing with what they can with what they got. Um, I ordered a bunch of stuff this week. I am trying to uh, work on the drift rat in the back over there. Um, we've got prototypes coming for a new grill to work better with that short, short setup. Um, that one is going to be called the SS chassis. <laughs> Super short, obviously. Um, it's not just for drifting. There will be some options for drifting um, if we can figure all that out. Um, there's some stuff that I'm working with negative GRC on. Um, always working with awesome designs on stuff as well. We're working on the new grill, changing the servo situation. And uh, yeah, hopefully that stuff will be later in the year. Um, the bedsides should be out, really should be out by the time this video comes out. They are shipping now, and I've got two weeks of videos in the book, so they should be here in time and have everything out, as well as this hood, uh, the Ferguson tractor grill and hood. Um, it's a funny story. Jason, Awesome Designs, grew up with this tractor on his farm, his the grandpa's farm, I think he said. And that's why he drew this, that, that grill like that. And uh, I had another prototype, but I actually sent it to him. He, he lives in South Africa. So we, we struggle with communication a lot because of just the time difference, not because of language, just the time difference. But um, I actually sent him the original green cab that was on this, a chassis kit and the original prototype grill, which the servo's in the, kind of the wrong spot, but I just needed him to have some rails in person with the cross members and stuff. So when we're designing stuff, he can maybe print a prototype and test it and see what's gonna work. Um, and he's just been such an awesome dude to work with. And uh, like I said, we've been working together. I've mentioned it before. We've been working together for seven years now, just little projects here and there. But since these kits, I finally launched them, used his, his cab, that cab is all his design, and uh, yeah, he's helped me design these, he's helped me design these, he's helped me redesign the grill, and uh, yeah, more stuff to come. But my original intention with this whole candy lever thing, I was thinking about last night in my dreams, servo. I'm thinking about the Red Cat hauler, the way their servo links are, it's one per side. So... I'm trying to think of a way their massive block, I mean, it's like this big. So it would not work on this at all. It's massive. It would eat up all the interior. So I can't just reuse the red cap stuff, obviously, but I, I the way my mind works now with these kits, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, I can have some metal pieces cut and we could do stuff like that and use, use make our own little plates for it and do all this kind of stuff. And it just didn't jive right straight. This was supposed to be front axle, the radius arm, the shock, uh, it will not work on this long setup. Not there unless you want to use like a 110 millimeter shock. So I was trying to think of ways to creatively use mounts that are already there. So like the pivot point would be attached to this. So instead of having to put a spacer inside of the radius arm uh, joint, it would just be the pivot point. We'd have it on both sides of it. It would bolt inside of it. And the shock would pivot off of that and go to a point on the front axle and allow it to raise up and down, which would allow us to do away with the front shock mounts on our grill designs, which would allow even more creativity, allow different wheelbase options, but still a ways out. It's just a, that's just brainstorming for now. But you know, you have enough storms, eventually you get a flood. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I've got accomplished what I need to do to accomplish. I have these longer shocks, but they're still not quite long enough. And you don't want shocks angled off your front axle like that. It just doesn't look right. I really need, I really need a, what was it? A Traxxas something or another. 1 18th Jado or something like that. Had a little 
pivot point that mounted on the front. If we can incorporate that into a grill and have the shock mounts outboard of the grill with the pivot points attached to the grill, another servo inside of the grill, and one servo, push the entire front up and down, maybe something like that could work. But I don't know, just a brainstorming. Um, I appreciate everybody that's bought the kits. The Rat Rod kit group on Facebook is just hopping right now. We've got, I think, 3,200 members right now. I have not sold that many kits, I promise you. Um, a lot of people are interested. Um, I'm waiting on kits right now. We're delayed. Production is always an issue with 3D printed stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the hoods. They had some issues printing, and they had to reprint, so the bedsides and the hoods have been late. Um, my next 50 kits <clears throat> are just started printing, and I just ordered another 50, hoping to have them by Christmas. So... Uh, check out rceveryday.com. Um, I'll keep you updated on so social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok even, and uh, especially in the Rat Rod Kit page on Facebook. If you have Facebook, a lot of people don't like Facebook. I don't blame them, but I'm kind of bound to it with uh, what I do. So <laughs> uh, maybe I'll see you there. But get out there and do something fun with the hobby. You don't have to do anything this extreme. You don't have to engineer your own stuff, but you get bored with the kit. Start thinking outside of it. You got spare parts. I've been building for most of my life. The majority, 30 years or so now. Well, yeah, about 28 years I've been in the RC. And, uh, you know, I've amassed this collection of parts and these bins and all this stuff over the last 10 max. And, uh, yeah, just having parts on hand, you start thinking differently. You start thinking, well, I'm, I have that part. I have this part. And then it turns from that into... Well, I could do this with this thing with these parts I have over here. And then you start thinking outside of the kit and you start thinking of ways to engineer your own things. And it's just a good creative exercise to get your brain working. And uh, I think it's fun. I don't know. Some people do. But appreciate you guys watching. Get out there and do something. Keep it scale and I'll see you in the next video.